Hey everyone, Erin from The Impatient Gardener, and today I'm cutting back some perennials. Now we've already done a video on the Chelsea Chop, which is where you reduce the size of some perennials to either um, size control them a little bit, keep them from splitting, or delay their bloom time. Uh, but this is something different. This is cutting back perennials that have already bloomed and why you might want to do that and when you might want to do that. So there's, we're at the sort of the point in summer here where there's a few things that are prime for some cutting back here. So I thought I'd just bring you along and show you that. So in this area, I've got a whole bunch of cat's pajamas nepeda. And um, you can see it bloomed, it bloomed beautifully, but it's really looking pretty unkempt now. So nepeda is a great one to cut back and um, and you can sometimes do this multiple times a year because you can encourage new growing, uh, new blooming. So with Nepeda, um, I'm just going to take it back to, sometimes you get a nice little cluster in the center. You can cut it back just about as hard as you feel like cutting it back. I cut it back to where we're getting to good foliage. I mean, you can cut it back just to cut the flowers off. But I go even farther than that, and I cut back um, just to where the foliage is starting to look good again because it will reflush. And there's nothing more to it than that. You just have to get in there and cut out um, all those flowers. And the next plant's over. And that's it. So you just create a nice little mound here. You don't have to be precious about it. You don't have to cut any place in particular. It's just a quick cut job. And then that will reflush, certainly with nice new foliage. And probably you'll get a rebloom. So this lady's mantle is actually still looking really pretty. I think the flowers are gorgeous on it. So I probably won't cut all of them back yet, but um, you do have some options with ladies mantle. So one option when the flowers are spent is to cut the whole thing back and it will reflush with fresh foliage. It does take a while to do that. So it's a fair amount of time with a bare spot in your garden. What I find myself doing most of the time is just kind of cutting back to the main clump of foliage uh, that's in the middle there. So I'll get rid of all of all of this. Um, by the way, it makes this is the go most gorgeous flower in bouquets. So I will get rid of all of this, which are sort of the long, the longer stems that have created the flower stems. And I just cut back those um, just to keep a nice rounded, tidy plant. You will get some new foliage coming out, but for the most part, you're just sort of tidying up the plant so that you don't have um, these raggedy bits hanging off, which are not raggedy bits right now, but once these flowers die, um, they're definitely raggedy bits. But, you know, experiment in your garden if you've got ladies mantle with cutting a couple of them fully back and just see if you like how that looks. But in the meantime, I just have got myself a great bouquet. So I'm a little mad at this salvia here right now. Um, this area of the garden is supposed to be this beautiful um, display of beautiful salvia. This is caradonna. It's not supposed to flop. A lot of it flopped over. Um, but what we have in most cases here, you can do multiple things with salvia too. Now, when I was with Roy Diblick, he mentioned that he lets his salvia stand and then new flowers form on some varieties at the top of these flowers or come in from here. So you get the spent flowers and the new flowers, which is kind of an interesting look. But these, none of these are laying in the right direction. So um, one of the reasons to prune perennials is because they're driving you nuts when they're falling over. So this one has fully splayed open, but you can see there's nice new foliage coming from the center. So I'm going to cut back to that. Now with some salvias, I'll just cut off uh, the flowers and, um, and then leave the foliage. But when you've got it looking like this, I'm just not going to put up with this behavior. So the whole thing's going to get a haircut like that. You'll be left with this nice little round mound of foliage here, which of course will grow. Uh, it's highly questionable whether you're going to get another bloom out of this though. Um, so I, if that happens, I will consider that to be a great bonus. And if it doesn't, I'm not, I won't be disappointed. So sometimes I will cut back a perennial that is still in bloom, um, because it's just doing something odd. So for whatever reason, we're in the middle of this beautiful stand of Statues, Summer Crush. And um, for whatever reason, this one or maybe two in the middle here have just completely fallen flat to the ground. I have no idea why they did that, um, but we're going to, um, I'm just gonna cut that back because I feel like it's taking out all the other plants around it. So this is more of a rescue mission for other plants, again. I do have some beautiful flowers to show for it though. So 
So now I have the makings of a bouquet here actually, which isn't the worst outcome from some time in the garden. So you guys, cutting back perennials is always your choice. Um, you don't need to do it, um, but generally it's a way of tidying things up. So you get to pick how you cut them back, when you cut them back, whether you want to cut them back at all. Um, and then it's good to sort of watch and see what your plants do afterwards so that you know um, if you're going to get another bloom out of them or if you're just doing it to tidy it up and just have fresher looking foliage or if maybe it doesn't really do much at all and you actually preferred the look of the sort of dying flowers on it. So play around in your garden and see what perennials do when you cut them back so that you know for future years how you really want to approach it. But these are the kinds of jobs that I really like in the garden. I like jobs in the garden that allow a gardener to show off their sort of their garden personality and uh, these are the sort of things that go into a garden that are the gardening part. It's, it's what makes it your garden and not everybody else's garden. All right, I hope that was helpful to you guys um, and I hope you're having a great day in your garden. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.